Wanda Goronsky crashes on her sister's sofa, attending late to the divorce court where she relinquishes custody of her children to her husband. With a landscape as desolate as a quarry-like region of Pennsylvania, Wanda has little opportunity and even less to offer. Unable to acquire more hours within the sewing factory she is terminated from, and after a regrettable one-night stand, Wanda inadvertently falls in with Norman, a petty crook and thief who she initially mistakes as a bartender. Often demanding and disrespectful towards Wanda, she perseveres with naivety, enduring Norman's harassment due to her inability to go elsewhere or do anything else. This is Barbara Loden's Wanda, produced, written, directed, and starring Barbara Loden herself in the titular role, creating an additional layer to the film's semi-autobiographical inspiration, a once forgotten, now cherished classic of feminist cinema. Not unlike an anti-Bonnie and Clyde film, Wanda portrays patriarchal violence and control, and their lack of identity with an undeniable, unflinching American independent cinema verite style. There is little here that portrays the empowerment of women, but Loden's film demonstrates the reality of women who feel lost, and the manipulation they may face, a feeling that many women have felt at one point or another. What is initially notable about Barbara Loden's film from the opening images is the cinema verite approach to filmmaking, which serves as a quiet inspiration to the decades of American independent filmmaking that would follow. Clearly low budget, the cinema verite approach to Wanda provides the film with a confrontational realism, a level of believability that makes the subject of the film inescapable. Briefly discussing the cinematography of Wanda, Tony Paley wrote for The Guardian that Nicholas Proferes, the film's cinematographer and editor, worked on documentaries and his cinema verite style was crucial in fashioning what is now recognised as a landmark in American independent film. Proferes's handheld camera work, the authenticity of the grimy milieu, and Loden's acting caught the attention of the Venice Film Festival jury, where Wanda won the Critics Prize in 1970. Nicholas Proferes' experience with documentary filmmaking is clear as day within Wanda, as the film's handheld sequences, especially during scenes such as Norman's bank robbery going south, have a heightened level of realism, effectively making Wanda's most intimate or dramatic scenes the film's most immersive, reinforcing the film's sense of truthfulness, especially when considering the film's semi-autobiographical inspiration. Wanda as a character is naive, foolish, and even irresponsible, but she's believed Many people can easily think of past memories where they themselves were just as naive, foolish or irresponsible. Wanda reflects a personal aspect of Barbara Loden, a mirroring of Loden's own struggles with feeling directionless with life, and how she tried to shape herself to be someone else's idea of her. Referencing Barbara Loden's own words, Tony Paley's article elaborates on the autobiographical nature of Wanda, stating that Her extraordinary performance as the acquiescent and emotionally blank Wanda is part of what makes the film so memorable. I used to be a lot like that, she admitted in an interview at the time of the movie's release. I had no identity of my own, I just became whatever I thought people wanted me to become. A relatable subject matter for many young adults, unsure of their futures, uncertain of what they are capable of contributing, and a theme that is prominent in many classic coming-of-age films. Barbara Loden's own struggle to understand her identity, and the pressures to become the figure that others expected her to be is mirrored effectively in Wanda's own lack of direction after marriage and losing her job. Two aspects of living many people place great emphasis on, as well as her frequent dependency on men like Norman, who continue to belittle chastise, harass and abuse her. Wanda is a dependent woman, and in her naivety, she is the subject of exploitation and manipulation for Norman's crooked schemes, as well as the cheap sexual gratification for other men. In depicting Wanda as a vulnerable nobody, Barbara Loden examines women's struggle for identity, the difficulty in leaving a mark on the world, and the ease in which patriarchal influence can manipulate for its own needs. Patriarchal influence is very prominent in Loden's film, especially 
especially during scenes between Wanda and the crook, Norman. As Norman lays low in a rundown motel room, he demands Wanda to go out and buy him cheeseburgers, smacking her around the face when she speaks too loudly, and barking at her to remove the toppings from the burgers. Norman gives Wanda some cash to buy clothes, only to distract her while he tries breaking into cars in the parking lot, later chastising her for not buying the clothing he wants to see her in, throwing anything out of the car window that isn't a dress. Any action Wanda may perform out of generosity, or any action Wanda may carry out that suits what she would like, is treated with stern rejection. Any of Wanda's wants, needs and personality is therefore trampled in favour of Norman's aggression and paranoia. Women caught within abusive relationships they feel unable to escape are bound to relate to Wanda within this situation. Wanda may be naive, but she doesn't deserve to be treated this way, having her every action policed. When Norman attempts to rob a bank only to be killed by the police, Wanda watches from behind a police officer as the failed robbery is resolved, but the reaction caught on Wanda's face doesn't suggest relief at being able to escape from a controlling man, but a sense of concern and distress. Wanda, despite being faced with callousness from Norman, always remained considerate towards him, even when it upset her. In a sense, Wanda may be concerned for Norman's well-being within this moment. Additionally, she may also be distressed at the possibility of returning to a directionless life, as her time with Norman provided the goals of getting by and escaping from the police. Without Norman, and with no connection to her family prior to this, Wanda is truly alone in the world. From this point onward, Wanda herself doesn't have any lines of dialogue, and the scene in which a war veteran sexually assaults her is depicted as a one-sided, non-consensual traumatic event, further reinforcing the ability patriarchal violence has in targeting vulnerable women. As she stumbles towards a crowded, lively bar filled to the brim with music, and as she is welcomed by a generous woman who offers her booze and cigarettes, Surrounded by the attention of men, Wanda truly seems dead inside. Without all this activity around her, with the acknowledgement that she is without direction in life, unless if it's as a target for men's sexual or violent gratification, within this existence, Wanda couldn't be any more lonely. In conclusion, Barbara Loden's Wanda is an undeniably feminist call for compassion towards the downtrodden and belittled women uncertain of their futures, presented with a realistic direction that relates to Barbara Loden's own personal feelings regarding her lack of identity. Nonetheless, despite the personal concerns regarding identity, Wanda is filled to the brim with it, sharing a sense of realism reminiscent of classic documentary filmmaking, and with a strong sense of empathy towards a flawed protagonist, Wanda is the small American an independent classic that was almost completely lost. Tony Paley briefly discusses the unlikely chance of rediscovering Wanda with Ross Lipman who assisted in restoring the film, later in his article stating that Ross Lipman, who worked on Wanda's restoration for UCLA, says the response to the film's rediscovery has been overwhelming. He described how he found reels marked Wanda in 2007 in an abandoned film and video laboratory in Hollywood where everything had been earmarked for the dump. On spooling them on my workbench, I quickly realised they were the original camera rolls, and that was only the beginning. The film was shot on a beautiful, unfaded, ectochrome reversal stock. Any potential restoration would perhaps look better than even the original release. One day more, and the original would have gone to the landfill. Wanda as a film shares a similar experience to Wanda as a character, a film ignored, the film stock almost without any direction other than the close call it had with the landfill. Like Lipman's compassion towards the restoration of the film, the more compassionate and empathetic viewers will discover that Barbara Loden's Wanda is a patient, gorgeous character study of the flawed woman. A figure still highly relatable, skewering the romanticisation of the road trip by exploring the difficulties of discovering oneself when faced with the bombardment of male chastisement. A phenomenal film that almost disappeared from the cinematic landscape, Wanda is one of the greatest hidden treasures of feminist cinema. A special thank you to my incredible tier Patreon supporter Gil, and my super tier Patreon supporters Constantine Bombelli and at Layla Lu One. Thank you.